I made this electrolysis cell two years ago and it worked very well. Recently I decided to use it again um, for teaching and refilled it with electrolyte because it had been stored dry for more than a year. And I found out it had a problem. There, were, there was corrosion. Although the plates are stainless steel, there was some corrosion or electrolytic action and it had increased the internal resistance. One of the connections at the wing nut had oxidized or corroded and uh, the increased resistance heated up the stainless steel wing nut and bolt and melted a hole in the plastic top which obviously made a leak and so the thing was out of action. So I decided to build a new one with maybe a bit more heavy duty and also this design using um, alternate positive and negative plates is a very good design but uh, if you do want to disassemble it and clean it it's a real pain. Due to electrolytic action one of the electrodes corrodes a lot more than the other one. You can see one is quite discoloured whilst the other one is relatively unharmed. Uh, this does however increase the internal resistance of the cell. So what I decided to do was instead of using perforated stainless steel plates I decided to use stainless steel scouring pads which is basically swarf from uh, stainless lathe turnings um, and these are really really cheap and when they become discoloured and corroded you just unbolt them, take them off, put on a new one and throw away the old one. There's, there's no need to, to spend ages trying to clean it. So I thought that would be a better way to go. Now I got the design from this video, King of Random, um, which is a very practical design and I'll show you a brief clip from this. Can you make water explode? Well, maybe not water per se, but with a simple technique we can turn one of the most abundant materials on earth into a highly explosive gas. In this project we're building a generator that uses electricity to convert this into this. This piece is finished. As far as I can see, these plastic fittings are not available in Cambodia. And also, ordering large diameter acrylic tube, uh, which I have ordered before from China, and it arrived smashed to bits in the post. Um, so, not so easy to get large acrylic tube either. So I decided to use an Ovaltine jar, which are quite easy to get here. This system produces an extremely powerful oxyhydrogen gas. Running on two car batteries, it'll make about five liters per minute. And when the gas is used, it simply turns back into water. The amount of water already in this system is enough to produce thousands and thousands of liters of fuel. I looked on YouTube for various designs of electrolysis cells. They range from the very amateur, there's one with a couple of spoons in a jar, which, which works, uh, to the professional heavy duty design. This cell is taking about 15 amps at 25 volts, so you need quite a big power supply to run it. Um, this is because of the electrode separation. Uh, he needs 25 volts. Now, my cell, I was originally running it 
on the round two and a half volts uh, and around eight amps uh, I modified the power supply to give more voltage and then it would run at around five volts at uh, 10 11 amps and I also included a series resistor because the power supply is not adjustable um, and then Unfortunately, to the complete and utter rubbish, like this uh, Mythbusters design. These idiots have no idea what they're doing, not even the most basic knowledge of electrolysis theory, although they said they learnt it at school. And they just made a waste of materials to produce a non-functional, useless piece of junk. I think that we should make some hydrogen in the shop. Do you want to have a way to have hydrogen here anytime you need it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think we can probably do that. Um, you know, I remember high school science, you use electrolysis. Ele DC power mm -hmm. separates hydrogen, uh, water into hydrogen and oxygen, and you can collect the gas with a balloon off a hose at the top of the yeah. thing. How difficult can it be? It's the most abundant element in the universe. Indeed. All right, so here's what I want. 15 liters of hydrogen by the end of the day. Good luck! Juice up to one end, hook it up to the other end. Mm -hmm. Hopefully hydrogen and oxygen come out. Which one's the anode? Uh, whichever one we want. Yours is the anode. Whichever one has the best marks should okay. be the anode. Okay, all right, let's fit them in. Okay. Let's see, this is a test fitting. Ugh. Right. Insert your tower, sir. Yeah, I can't show that on YouTube. That's not bad. It almost looks like we knew what we were doing. This is the rig, we got a lot of surface area, we can generate a lot of hydrogen, a lot of oxygen. Right. But before we get to that, we gotta build a stand. All right, let's do it. All right, that's it. Electrolysis rig's built, we got a stand, we're gonna tie it down, we're gonna carry it outside, we got some special surprises. And let's go test it. Yeah, let's see how it works. Okay, Norm, we're back. We're outside. We have our electrolysis rig set up. It's full of water. We're running current through it. What's happening inside the tubes? Well, this is a basic science experiment. We're taking water, H2O, and splitting it into its two component molecules, hydrogen and oxygen. Now, to do that, all you have to do is run current through it. DC uh, current, specifically. DC current through it. And where does that current come from? Well, you could plug this into a power supply, into your car battery, but we wanted clean energy. And what cleaner energy is there than the sun? Yeah, so we got a commercially available solar panel. It's the kind that you might put on the roof of your recreational vehicle to power small electronics during the day. And uh, it produces about 22 volts of power, about 100 watts of energy. And uh, we're running that through the, through the tubes right now to split hydrogen and oxygen at the anode and cathode respectively. Right, and with this type of hydrogen converter and generator, uh, the more voltage you run through, the more hydrogen, the faster that process happens. Exactly, so we could have used, say, a 12 volt car battery. That's the traditional way you do this in high school science experiments. Uh, but we're gonna produce a lot more energy because the panel is actually producing 22 volts uh, of, rather than 12 volts. Now, the other important ingredient is water. And this isn't just normal tap water. No, normal tap water has a ton of impurities, salts, calcium carbonate, stuff like that. And the side effect of running normal tap water in an electrolysis rig is that you can produce unpleasant things that you don't wanna breathe, like chlorine gas, it's very dangerous and very corrosive. So but look at the machine. I think it's working. You have oxygen coming out, being released harmlessly into the atmosphere, mm -hmm. and then the hydrogen bubbles being funneled into this giant clear garbage bag. And over time, we're gonna gather a bunch of hydrogen. All right, guys, the rig looks great. How did it do? Well, you asked for 15 liters yep. of hydrogen. I think we got about 15 milliliters. That's, I'm no mathematician, but that's off by a couple zeros. It's only two orders of magnitude. <laughs> but you did actually make hydrogen. What's coming out of this one? Oxygen, Oxygen, right? yeah. All right. So oxygen over here, hydrogen over there. Um, now the upshot from this is this is not the most efficient process. I, clearly. <laughs> in case you couldn't tell, yeah. we used clean energy to produce the hydrogen, which was a good step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. But there's much more efficient industrial processes that you can use to make com commercial hydrogen at scale for things like hydrogen powered cars and hydrogen powered tools and all the stuff that we're excited about. So the better way to get hydrogen than making an electrolysis rig in your garage, probably go down to your local gas supplier and buy a big tank of hydrogen. Okay. 
Now, the problem is with it that the electrode separation is far too much and, and they're using high voltage low current which is the complete opposite of what you need. You want you, want, you don't need high voltage, but you need high current. Ele electrolysis depends on the current, not, not the voltage. Um, and this video com has completely destroyed any respect I might once have had for Mythbusters. And to conclude with, oh, electrolysis doesn't work, it's very inefficient, better just to go and buy a tank of hydrogen, that is really pathetic. It, it, electrolysis works really well, but you have to have the electrodes in close separation. If you want to separate the hydrogen oxygen streams, then you have to divide, devise a method where they're um, quite close together, the electrodes, or, or it, it does become inefficient. And using a, this huge U-tube with a vast separation is, is just useless. Uh, you can see at the end they they maybe produced a very wimpy looking balloon supposedly with hydrogen but you can see it's inflating and deflating and it looks like they've disconnected it and they're just blowing into it to to, to simulate it as if it was full of hydrogen. I don't think they even collected any in the end. I think they faked even that. So that is real rubbish. My design uses an Ovaltine jar and you start with the lid. There is a central M10 hole for a 90 degree stainless steel union for the gas outlet. And two holes I used uh, M4, holes drilled for the um, electrode bolts. Um, I cut a silicone washer to fit the lid and gave it a good smear of silicone grease as well to make sure and leak tested everything. The, uh, the electrodes which are stainless steel scouring pads uh, bolted on using four square stainless steel washers made from some perforated plate uh, and then they are each, because there's a danger of them shorting together um, and you don't want the spark inside a hydrogen oxygen generator they are encased, encased in a bag, a mesh, mesh bag like the one you get oranges in and that's secured with a cable tie and then uh, a double thickness of um, it's actually made from a plastic tray, uh, separator plates are fitted in between so that there's, as far as I can see there's no chance that they should short out and I also check with the meter before putting electrolyte in because once you put electrolyte in the thing acts like a, a sort of a capacitor and uh, gives quite a low reading but not short circuit the one-way check valves were made from a couple of syringes and a bulb, rubber bulb from a medicine dropper. And I have a video here how I did it. How to cut these syringes to make a one-way valve. Turn on the gas. Heat up a blade, cut a blade, pretty hot, nearly red hot. And you want to cut one near the, these are 10 mil, 10 mil or actually 12 mil syringes. And uh, you want to cut one to the 4 mil mark and one to the, about the 1 mil mark. This is the easiest way to, to cut them. Don't bother with a hacksaw. So get that nice and hot. Four mil mark is about there. Get 
and it cuts as easy as that. And the second one at the one mil mark. Which is about there. Easy. These are probably polypropylene, so not so easy to stick with glue. Um, I, I just assemble everything with silicone grease, this is Chinese silicone grease, or this is also silicone grease, and uh, a thin smear, a thin smear of this grease will make it airtight. Um, the, the, the medicine dropper, um, it's pretty easy to, to take apart. Now, take this out and then you can remove the rubber bulb and trim the end so that it's like this. This is the uh, the end of the valve that passes the gas and this end obviously will seal it. So you put a very thin smear of silicone grease on, on this end to give a good seal. And when you assemble it you use some vinyl tubing again a thin smear of silicone grease and it will it's a nice tight bush fit on. You can see this electrolysis cell in action in a lecture I gave to my junior students and they very much enjoyed the explosions. <laughs>